Thank you for tuning in to the AWS Internet of Things video channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss strategies for effectively load testing your IoT solutions. My name is Darren Weber. I'm a senior solutions architect at AWS with more than 25 years of experience in architecture, applications, and the Internet of Things. I have a keen interest in transforming and optimizing businesses with innovative IoT solutions. In terms of an agenda, I'm going to first go over the top reasons to load test your IoT solutions. Then I'll cover the existing challenges that our customers have shared with us over the years. Next, I'll deep dive into different testing approaches and solutions. And then last, I'll cover best practices for load testing your IoT solutions. So why should you test your IoT solutions? Load testing your IoT solutions helps to ensure a good customer experience. When customers experience device connectivity issues, delays, and errors in message delivery, their experience may not be so great. Devices which interact with people, such as smart home devices, need to be responsive and interact with very low latency. Cost control or optimization is another top reason. Understanding how your IoT solution performs under different load scenarios can help you optimize infrastructure cost. It allows you to right size your resources based on actual usage patterns. A third reason is service quotas. AWS has various limits associated with IoT services or even beyond IoT, which prevents abuse and ensures a quality of service. Load testing will help you understand how your IoT solution is behaving when you are exceeding or reaching your service quotas. Load testing can help you assess how well your IoT solution handles failures or disruption. By simulating various failure scenarios, such as a network outage, you can evaluate the effectiveness of your implemented IoT solution. You could validate that your failover, that your auto scaling mechanisms work as intended and making sure you're alerted when something is working as, isn't working as planned. Last is runtime anomalies. Load testing can help confirm how your IoT solution handles runtime anomalies, such as message duplication, and make sure you account for item potent message processing. Load testing your IoT solution helps to identify bottlenecks and throughput issues, allowing you to adjust your architecture before production. Some processing anomalies only appear under load. For example, message duplication. You wouldn't want your solution sending out emails twice for the same notification. Now let's talk about what makes load testing difficult for IoT solutions. Access to physical devices is often limited. IoT development teams don't usually have access to thousands or millions of test devices. Managing a stable of physical test devices requires dedicated resources and results in larger operational overhead. It's not straightforward to build simulators or soft devices that accurately represent the behavior of custom IoT devices. Libraries and modules which implement the core logic of your IoT devices are likely different than, say, a simulator you build on your own development machine. Operating system, network drivers, hardware, it'll all be different. Not to mention the undifferentiated work on keeping your custom test software up to date. Third, it's not always easy to anticipate real world load on your IoT solution. This is especially so when you have consumers that are interacting directly with your device. Should you test for an incremental increase in usage for your new IoT device or measure the highest possible load? Your IoT solution is most likely in an environment which you cannot completely control. Transient network connectivity or capacity, perhaps service updates to the underlying components of your IoT solution, these are all events which are usually overlooked when testing. Additionally, it's not always easy to simulate the randomness of the real world environment or how your consumer will behave. When we look at load testing IoT solutions, these core strategies are used. I'll touch upon them here and get into more detail shortly. A common approach is to test with a small number of physical devices. Testers manually interact with your physical devices to test your IoT solution. Results are measure and then you know, derive for larger fleets of devices. Software simulators are frequently used to load test IoT solutions. 
Often one of the first things the development team does after deploying an IoT solution is to create a test simulator. You know, take your solution for a test spin. Simulators can be used to simulate traffic or simulate the IoT devices themselves. Now, simulators take many forms from custom developed, open source solutions to AWS partner solutions. Message replay is a technique where the messages from a live or production environment are captured and then replayed back into your QA or test environment. With message replay, both command and control, as well as device lifecycle messages are captured and replayed. The message replay rate can be varied to simulate intended load. Now, by combining testing approaches, you can increase your test coverage and get closer to a real world scenario. For example, you could use message replay to generate a baseline of traffic and then use simulation to create an additional inflow of messages, say to model a massive on-ramp of new devices following a product release. Now let's dive a little deeper into each of these load testing strategies. The diagram depicts a typical testing setup with a production environment on the top and a smaller set of devices connected to a test environment on the bottom. Now, there are some advantages to testing with physical devices. First, it's easy to set up and test. You can use a dedicated fleet of test devices or take some of the existing fleet and repoint them to your QA or test environment. Measure and monitor results and extrapolate the results to a larger fleet. This testing approach is ideal for solutions which have a predictable interactions between your IoT devices and your IoT cloud solution. Let's take a field telemetry solution as an example. The IoT solution collects tank level data from storage tanks deployed in the field. Let's say the IoT device wakes up and reports the tank level three or four times a day. As the number of telemetry devices increases with your field deployment, so will your overall traffic in a very linear fashion. So this is a very good fit for testing with a small number of physical devices and then scaling the results. Another advantage of this testing approach is that you're testing with the exact firmware and device libraries. If you keep your test pool of physical devices small, the costs are lower, with most of the cost in configuring, managing the test fleet, along with the effort to conduct a test manually. Device simulation is a common IoT load testing technique. Software is used to simulate device load on your solution. You could create your own simulator or you can use open source options. One such architecture for simulating IoT load is represented here in the test and management account on the top. There's a web application controller which interacts with a set of APIs for managing the simulation. And then step functions for generating the load into the QA or test account that you see on the bottom. With software-based device simulation, it's easy to generate a wide range of message loads. Since it's software generating the load, you can easily adjust the message rates. Whether you develop or extend your own custom device simulator, you could test any possible scenarios that are needed. So for example, you could simulate peak loads or other complex patterns of traffic. Let's say you have a new consumer device releasing in time for the holidays. You'll want to simulate everyone going out and registering your device over a very short time frame. Simulating your device load allows you to stress your design, whether that's high traffic or exercising conditional pass through your solution. As I'll cover shortly, stressing your solution is critical to discovering potential bot bottlenecks or faults. Also, if you have builders or developers on your team, simulators for load testing are a good fit because more than likely you'll be doing some software development already. So either building a simulator yourself or extending open source solutions, it's a natural fit. In the message replay approach, you capture messages from your live or production account and play them back into a QA or test account. The diagram here, here illustrates a common message replay architecture. In the live account at the top, you have an extra IoT rule and Kinesis fire hose to preserve ingested messages into S3. Then in the QA test account, you see an architecture very similar to the device simulator we just looked at with a web application controller, some test APIs, and step functions. The difference here is that step functions are pulling messages that were preserved from the live account in S3 rather than simulating the messages. 
An advantage of message replay is that testing includes message types and typical loads that are encountered in production. Since messages are replayed from the live account, you're testing command and control, as well as auto-generated messages such as device lifecycle messages. In addition to replaying the messages at the rate they were originally received, you can adjust the rate to load test as desired. And testing with all message types, that is command and control and device lifecycle messages, more closely resembles the real world environment. So for example, when IoT services are updated, there are many device disconnects and reconnects that could happen, causing additional device lifecycle messages. Those message flows could be replicated, which could be hard to simulate on your own. Combining load testing approaches for IoT solutions has some advantages. You could combine one or more of the approaches previously described to get a broader test coverage. For example, you could use message replay for replicating a baseline of traffic and use a simulator to generate spot load. This combination could be used to say, test a massive on-ramp of new devices in an existing fleet. You could also combine message replay and a test device fleet to observe the impact of rolling out new firmware. Use a combination which best suits your testing environment. Using multiple load test approaches typically generates that broadest test coverage for your IoT solution. You not only test your cloud IoT solution components, you can also test your device firmware. Combining testing approaches represents the closest match to a real world environment condition. Combining load testing approaches provides flexibility in designing tests which exercise all the components of your solution. It's easier to stress specific areas of your solution or architecture. And it's usually incremental additional work just to add another testing strategy. Often the architecture for managing simulators is very similar to message replay. It's just the source of the message, which is different. And there's no reason why you cannot use the same control framework for the load testing. Whatever load testing approach you take, consider these best practices and integrate them into your testing strategy. First off, capture detailed metrics of your solution. Create custom metrics if needed. Without measurement data, it's hard to get a complete picture of your solution's performance. Now, if your solution is sensitive to latency or has a consumer on one end of the interaction, make sure to measure latency throughout your solution. An easy way to measure latency is by adding milestones and timestamps to your IoT message as it traverses your solution. Related to capturing metrics, collect data on service quotas. If you exceed service limits, your processing will most likely be adversely affected due to throttling. Be sure to check the specific service quotas which may affect your, your IoT solution. Third, give particular focus to components of your solution most likely to be affected by load. Design your, your testing to stress the parts of your solution typically resulting in bottlenecks, exceptions, or anomalies. Let's go back to the example we're planning to test for onboarding a million new devices. That's likely to be a different solution component than let's say the path that your established devices take. Validate that your database writes scale up to match the new device registrations. It's good practice to validate that your failover and scale out design works as intended. It's also equally important to test that your scale back strategy works. You don't wanna be paying for more than you need to. Now, most load testing concentrates on the command and control messages or ingested data. Make sure you're testing the other message types that your solution depends on, such as automated device lifecycle messages, which track device connectivity. The next one, number six, causes many designs to break. Test your IoT solution for anomalies due to message duplication or messages received out of order. Under load, some services can duplicate messages or cause messages to be received out of order. Focus on SQS or SNS as examples. Validate that your design handles messages in an item potent manner or you're using FIFO queues where needed. Device disconnects are a fact of life for a host of reasons. Transient network connectivity, IoT service updates, plan and test for them. 
Validate that your devices handle disconnects gracefully. Ensure your reconnect strategy includes a random back off. You don't want a million devices trying to all reconnect at once. You'll hit service limits, which results in a poor user experience. Also, if you're using MQTT, consider using persistent connections. That allows device clients to maintain its subscription and message state across multiple connections. And lastly, number eight, plan and ensure your test devices have configurable settings and endpoints. Make sure you can easily adjust device settings remotely. Consider a device setting for testing, which captures and outputs metrics and logs as seen from the device side. An additional best practice I'd like to mention, if you're planning load testing where you expect to exceed the current service limits, there's a process for requesting service limit increases for a load test, which requires some additional information along with a support ticket. Now, keep these best practices in mind when planning your load and performance testing. I hope you gained some additional insight, which will help you in building your IoT solutions on AWS. Thank you for watching this video on load testing your IoT solutions.